the transmasculine urge to absolutely obliterate your chest. Am I right, fellas? Welcome back to the FTM Fitness Series. Very exciting stuff today. We are hitting the gym and going through our first workout of the new split. My previous video in this series is all about setting you up for success with fitness. I covered everything you need to know to get started, which of course you already know because you watched that first. You wouldn't just skip the first video in the series like a maniac. Just in case you need a little refresher, I'll go ahead and put the link to that video in the description so that you can just, you know, go brush up on everything you learned the first time you watched it. So for this FTM beginner workout plan, we're doing a low volume push pull leg split. It's optimized for someone who's just getting started. So if it's your first time setting foot in the gym, this plan will be a great way to ease you into fitness. But we don't all start from the same place and I want this plan to be able to help as many people as possible. So I've tried to make it as versatile as I can by keeping it easily customizable. So the intensity, frequency, and volume can all be adjusted to accommodate your needs. So here are some examples of how you can do that. If the workouts are feeling a little easier, or you just know that there's more that you could be doing to challenge yourself, you can add more weight to your exercises to up the intensity or increase the volume by adding additional sets. And since it's a three-day split, you can also repeat it twice a week to up the frequency. And everyone should go into this expecting to make these adjustments in the coming weeks so that you can continue to challenge yourself. As a beginner in the gym, you're going to make what's called noob gains, which to put simply is just a lot of progress in a short amount of time. When you go from doing nothing to doing something, it doesn't take much to get results. But since your body is adapting so quickly, you need to also adapt your training in order to continue to see progress. So here's an example of how you can take this split and essentially turn it into a full eight week program that continues continues to challenge you. To start off by copying the split sheet that I've provided in the description below, print that out and track your workouts by recording the weight and reps you did for each set that week. Then try to increase that weight a bit each week for four weeks. At the end of the four weeks, adjust the volume of the workouts by adding one additional set to each exercise. And then with that, continue trying to increase the weight you're lifting for four more weeks. Now don't expect to always be able to up the weight every week on every exercise, but as long as you're consciously trying to increase it where and when you can, you'll continue making progress. So at the end of this, just with those few easy adjustments, you finished an eight week program that efficiently utilized your potential as a beginner by adapting along with you. So now that you know what this split is and how to use it, Let's get into it. We're kicking off with push day, hitting at chest, shoulders, and triceps. Now some trans guys are a bit hesitant to work out their chest. If you're like, I've got enough going on there already, I don't need any more. <laughs> I feel you, but allow me to put your worries to rest because there's actually some pretty great reasons why building at chest muscle pre-op is beneficial. First off, if you plan on having top surgery, increasing the muscle on your chest will provide more contour for the surgeon to work with, improving aesthetic results. That's a quote from topsurgery.net. Speaking from my own experience as a pre-op trans guy, building up chest muscle can do a lot to masculinize the look of your chest. I think it's because like your pecs sit higher than, you know, the other stuff. So having that muscle there like evens it out. I feel like it makes it all sort of blend together visually. You just kind of make the rest of your chest look like more muscle. <laughs> that's the that's a pro tip. Also in terms of safety when it comes to working out, if you get in the gym and you're hitting everything but your chest, you're going to have some major muscle imbalances that can definitely lead to injury down the line. And having a buff chest is like a, a thing that guys want when they work out. So it's also not super realistic to expect yourself to just like get massively buff and like have a huge chest out of nowhere. Like it takes a lot of time and a lot of food to put on muscle weight. So yeah, there's just really no reason to be worried about working out your chest as a trans guy. So now that we're all good for hitting chest, let's fucking do it. As you can see from the lack of mask and mullet, all the gym footage was shot pre-pandemic. Getting in the gym for our push workout, we'll start by warming up our shoulders. I like to do this slow arm circle movement with resistance bands, or I'll grab like a couple five pound plates and do some Arnold presses. Real light here, like I said, this is just a warm up. Just to get out all the snap, crackle, and pops. Now after our warm up, we're starting off with with our main compound movement of this workout, which is the bench press. For hand placement, I like to measure a thumb's length away from the edge of the knurling, which is the metal grip texture on the bar. This gives me a good neutral grip width where my wrists are aligned with my elbows. A wide grip uses more of your shoulders and a close grip uses more of your triceps. So for the classic bench press, we're just looking for that sweet spot right in the middle. Now, you see I'm holding the bar here with my thumbs tucked under it. That's called a suicide grip and it's dangerous and bad. 
Hence the name. Don't use a suicide grip, man. The only reason I'm using it here is because I had some wrist and tendon issues that prevented me from using a proper grip. But I don't want anyone watching this to get the wrong idea. This is not the right way to do it. Wrap your thumb around the bar like a sane person or Ooh. you will die. Fuck suicide grip. All my homies hate suicide grip. All right. On your form, you want to bring your feet in, plant your heels, arch your back, and retract your shoulders. You bring the bar down to your lower chest and press it back up kind of towards your face so that it's moving at an angle, not just straight up and down. You don't want your elbows to be tucked in too close or flare way out. Your elbows should be at about a 45 degree angle out from your body, and they should be in line with your wrist and the bar at the bottom position, uh, which is called keeping your joints stacked. If it's your first time benching, don't bench without a spotter. Uh, you know, even if you're not planning on going heavy, it's just safer because even just unracking and re-racking the bar by yourself can fuck your shit up. So if you don't have anyone who can spot you on a free weight bench, you can do the Smith machine. You could also try just a basic pressing machine or doing push-ups, but overall I'd recommend trying to find a spotter so that you can do the real thing. So on bench we're going to start off with a light warm-up set for 10 reps. And then we'll do three working sets of five reps. I like to pyramid the weight, which means I just start a bit light on my first set and then increase the weight and go a bit heavier with each following set. You can do that to help yourself build up to a heavy weight or just do your three sets of five with one comfortable weight. Next, we'll move on to incline bench, which is another great compound movement for our push day. The form on this one will be similar to the flat bench, but because you're sitting at an incline, the bar will make contact higher on your chest and the angle of the bar path won't be as drastic. But again, you want a medium grip width on this and you want to get those thumbs around the bar. We're doing three sets of five reps here. And then moving on to machine flies. With this machine, you're gonna start by pulling each handle forward individually, then going through the movement with a slight bend in your elbows. You'll feel a nice stretch, and then you wanna squeeze your chest together as your hands get close. If your gym doesn't have this machine, you can do flies with cables or dumbbells instead. And on these, we'll be doing three sets of 10 reps. Next, we're gonna grab some light dumbbells and do some front and side raises. With these, you wanna keep a slight bend in your elbow and make sure that you're pulling that weight up without rotating your arms. So we're gonna do three sets of 10 with these. And then onto our final exercise, tricep cable kickbacks. For these, you'll clip that rope attachment onto a high cable. So with a slight bend in your knees, you're gonna lean forward, keep your elbows at your sides and pull the rope down and apart, bending only at the elbows. And you can kind of pull that rope apart at the end and feel that squeeze in your tricep. And you'll do that for three sets of 10. Now you'll see there's one more exercise on here. That is the optional burnout. I like to wrap up my workouts by taking a set of an exercise all the way to failure. And for this one, that is incline push-ups. When it comes to push-ups, the higher the incline that you're at, the easier they are. So if you can't do a push-up, you can probably still do incline push-ups if the incline is high enough. And that's a great way that you could learn to do a push-up if that's something you're wanting to do is slowly decrease that incline over time until you can do a flat, just regular push-up. So I like finishing up here with the incline push-ups because they're easier. I can, you know, really rep them out and get that final pump in my chest. It also keeps me from having to lay on the gym floor, which is, you know, gross. <laughs> but for these, the form is just like the bench press. You just flip it. You're pushing yourself up instead of a bar. You want your hands a couple inches out from shoulder width, elbows at 45, and the bench should touch your lower chest when you come down. And then you'll press up and squeeze your chest at the top. And we're just doing the one brutal burnout set of these taking it all the way to failure. And that's our push day. Don't forget to grab the split sheet below so that you can track your workouts. You can copy and paste that into a blank spreadsheet and modify it to fit your needs. Make sure you subscribe and have those notifications on so you can keep up with this series. I'm really digging all the feedback I've gotten on it. I appreciate all the comments on the first video. Lots of great ideas and questions for future videos, so I'm really digging that. So leave a comment if you have any questions or anything you want me to cover. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And as always, have a wonderful day, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.